Hey everybody, Chris App joining you on our second installment of our vlog series, Charting the Way Forward in Student Housing. Joining me today is a student housing veteran, Meredith McGrath. Meredith is in Houston, Texas today, and she's going to be talking about the viability of student housing, both on a short-term and long-term basis. Meredith, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks. I'm glad to be doing this with you. You were in student housing the last go when a recession hit with the great financial crisis in 2008. Tell us what might be a little bit different about this go around. Right. No, that's a good question. So the great financial crisis that kind of kicked off in 2008 was a purely economical situation. The financial markets collapsed, many jobs were lost, uh, but there was not a complete shutdown of everyday life as we know it and tie that into student housing. Therefore, there wasn't a direct hit on how student housing was operated and leased. Uh, current day situation, uh, it almost feels like we're in a little bit of more of a natural disaster phase and it's likely a recession that's going to be next following um, following this natural disaster. So I think what occur what's occurring today here and now is not necessarily indicative of how student housing is going to fare throughout the fallout from this entire recession. So right now, obviously, schools have moved online, some kids have gone home, the future of the fall semester is a little bit unclear. Um, so, you know, student housing operations, leasing, investment, et cetera, has all been directly impacted. But I think once we get past this natural disaster phase and move on to just purely a recession, it's going to be much more reminiscent of that uh, 2008 to 2011 time period where student housing um, really proved its viability. I think it's a really critical point that you've made, Meredith, about distinguishing the natural disaster, which we're certainly occurring and going through right now, versus a recession, which is likely to follow. And if the history is any indication of what the future might look like, student housing has proven to be recession resilient. In your opinion, you've been through this before, what makes student housing recession resilient? Yes, back to, uh, you know, 10, 12 years ago, um, it was really proven that when jobs are lost and, and unemployment's high and there's a financial crisis going on, people really go back and seek their education. They want to earn the degrees that maybe they hadn't um, taken the time in the past to earn. So from 2006 to 2011, uh, actually post-secondary education enrollment increased by 3 million people. So male enrollment increased by 18%, female enrollment increased by 14%, and um, a lot of people went back to college. I think once we get through this natural disaster phase and on to a more new normal type phase, and all we're dealing with is really the fallout from the economic recession, um, I think we're going to be able to see the true colors of student housing's viability. Um, so the current situation may be tough on student housing, uh, but the next 12 to 24 months um, it has the potential to really, really shine. And then on top of that, you add to the fact that there's been a lot of supply in student housing um, over the past few years, and that's probably going to slow down a little bit. And then you add to that, that a lot of people are going to be potentially going back to school if history repeats itself and the supply and demand fundamentals of student housing may um, never be stronger. So let's zoom back into the present day. Everybody's feeling the pain across all industries worldwide, student housing specifically. For our niche business of student housing, what gets us back on track in the present day? Right. I think that's the, the million dollar question and what everybody is is waiting to see is what universities and colleges plans for the fall 2020 semester are going to look like. I think they're all in the midst of working on contingency plans to, to gear up for um, a potential new normal. I think there's three different scenarios that can occur. There's scenario A where everything goes back to normal in the fall and college looks exactly like it always has and that's probably a little too rosy. Um, a little too optimistic, then there's option B, which is the opposite end of the spectrum, and campuses are closed and everything's online and college looks like it's never looked before, and that's probably too much doom and gloom, too pessimistic. Um, what's likely to occur is option C, kind of a hybrid approach, in which universities get all this, they do their best to make it as normal of an experience, get everybody back on campus, but, you know, 
make certain changes to de-densify campuses and ensure some social distancing, in which case, um, you know, students can be on campus and learning and also maybe have days where they're doing online learning. So not everyone is on campus at the same time in, you know, 500 person auditorium uh, classrooms, uh, a little bit smaller classroom sizes. But, you know, we're all just waiting. Um, it's too early for universities to lock in a certain decision. I think, you know, we have to see kind of how the next couple months play out. Um, so time will tell what um, the future is going to look like and how we're going to get right back on, on track as we always have. A waiting game. It's not what we do best in the student housing industry, but it sounds like that's what we're going to have to do this year in the short to medium run. Meredith, thank you very much for your insight. I do appreciate you joining us today. Everyone else, we look forward to our next vlog, which will highlight Craig Miller, the Capital Markets Director at Four Point. Craig will talk about the availability of debt and equity in the student housing market. Thank you very much for joining us. We look forward to your feedback.